This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You are welcome, child of God. You are welcome, believer in Christ. This is another powerful time in the presence of God. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And remember, joy is like it's like medicine that you take and it works good in your body. But when you are sorrowful, when you are sad, it will drain your strength, it will drain your energy, and it's not good for you. Please always make sure you are happy, happy in the Lord. The Bible says our faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we bring to you again word from the Lord. And as you're about to listen to this word, please open up your heart because God is set to do something very, very remarkable in your life. What kind and what manner of man is able to touch God? Who touched me? Meaning not everybody can touch me. So let's see very quickly from the lens of scripture. What kind and what manner of man is able to touch God such that it produces a destiny altering effect are you ready number one the first kind of man who can touch God according to scripture is a man with a broken and a contrite heart please write it will rush a man with a broken and a contrite heart is the only kind of man who can touch God 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 4 to 6 2nd Corinthians 3 4 to 6 it says and such trust have we through Christ to God word uh -huh. not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency the Bible says our capability our ability to always rise to the occasion is of God verse 6 who hath made us, we didn't make ourselves, we were made by God, able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. Psalm 51 and 17, we looked at that earlier on, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. Is someone learning? Psalm 100 and verse 3, very profound simple but powerful scripture one day god opened my eyes to see that scripture 103 psalm 100 verse 3 100 verse 3 media help us a hundred and verse 3 thank you it says know ye that the lord is god and that he it is he that had made us and not we ourselves for we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Until now, every time I read that scripture, I would just focus on enter his gates with thanksgiving, come before him with singing. But verse 3 tells us a very profound information. He says, have this knowledge as you come before God that it is, he is the one who made us and not that we made ourselves. Can I tell you, a life of pride and boasting will alienate men from touching God. The kind of man who can touch God, make contact, create a response of empathy, compassion from God to reach down to that man for his destiny is the man with a broken and a contrite heart. Number two, what kind of man is able to touch God? Are you ready? A man who perpetually acknowledges and honors God. A man who perpetually acknowledges and honors God. This is the kind of man who can touch God. Who touched me? A man, that includes woman, who perpetually acknowledges and honors God. 1 Samuel 2.30 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed, that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me, for them that honor me, I will honor. Is that in your Bible? And they that despise me, disregard me, 
trivialize me in the affairs of their lives carry me as a necessary luggage I will likely esteem God loves everybody but he does not treat everybody at the same level you settle that he loves everybody sincerely but when it has to do with trust and his dealings with men he does not deal with everybody at the same level second to a broken and a contrite heart let me explain to you i feel like backing backing down just to explain to you what a broken heart is you know what a broken heart is i wrote something here a heart that is ever aware of your insufficiency outside the help and the mercy of god this is what it means to have a broken heart i'll take it again a heart that is ever aware of your insufficiency outside of the help and the mercy of God that's what it means to be broken to be broken does not just mean to be wounded that, that's not that's not what I'm, I'm talking about a heart that is ever aware I'm backing up to the first point so that I'll just give clarity to it let me tell you the truth one of the secrets and I tell you this with all humility if you ever ask the secret or one of the major secrets behind the hand of God upon this ministry it is because I have come to a point where I know that if God does not help me by myself, I'm not able to do much for the kingdom. I've weighed myself spiritually, intellectually, financially, are we together? Sociologically, removing God and I found that I do not weigh much. Very small pastor, very small. It's difficult for leaders to admit this because we think that you know the more invincible you present yourself the more it is that you'll be respected it's not true human beings are more intelligent than that are we together i am ever aware if i run koinonia with my brain i will run all of you inside a ditch we will not even reach six months because there is a way that cement right unto a man but the ways thereof are the ways of death are we together now you use brain work alone to do the things of the kingdom you would derail yourself and derail God's people hallelujah when I go to God in prayer I don't go bragging and boasting and say I'm that great man no I go before the Lord sincerely and I'm saying it you are here listening to me I cry before him and I say Lord thank you for your mercy I am what I am because of who you are koinonia is what it is because of your mercy if you take your hand and you take your mercy from my life it says if the lord had not been on our side are you seeing that now there are many things that we have gotten beyond our prayer life there are many things that we have gotten beyond our fasting life there are many things we have gotten the favors the mercies for the things you have done for the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise i magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise i magnify your name the finances to run this ministry the wisdom to run this ministry the spirit of revelation to see something worth preaching about in this bible withdraw that wisdom from the spirit and you'll be surprised you will open your bible and not find anything you will search from morning till night everything you see that comes from this life bringing god glory i tell you my dear family here a global family and as many who are following this man you see huh my only stake in that equation is receiving the mercy of God and partnering with him by grace. Even the grace to be diligent came from God. So where then is our boasting? This is not a declaration of weakness. You run your mouth and you boast around God takes one step out of your life and you become a lesson for the nations that men without God cannot go far. We magnify your name we glorify your name we magnify your name we glorify 
Because in this kingdom, the race is not to the swift. The race is not to the swift. I've seen brilliant people. I've seen gifted people. I've seen skilled people. I've seen anointed people. I've seen families that love God with all their heart. Yet death kept coming to pick them one by one. In spite of the fact that they were righteous, loving people. And yet there's someone smoking out his destiny somewhere. And that guy will not die. A car will hit him, he will still recover. Different things will happen. He will smoke himself to passing out. And yet he will wake up and clean himself. No morning prayer, no afternoon prayer, no night prayer. And yet there are sincere believers who have died. When you add this equation called life bar, the end, the most constant factor is God. Every other thing is not worth creating as a template. Not you, not your ability. Everything will eventually fail. This is my understanding. When I cry before God and I lie and roll before God, I tell him, Lord, I'm doing this sincerely. This is your ministry. These are the, your people, the sheep of your pasture. I've seen very anointed and great men of God who cannot command the attention of a generation. Nobody's interested in hearing them. I've seen people who have signs and wonders, miracles, prophecy at a rate and a scale and a level you cannot imagine. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. There are billionaires in this country and around the world who have never seen the wall of a classroom. You sit down with them, they cannot even coordinate the kind of logic that brings that kind of financial results. But some of them were in their childlike faith open before God. And they said, Lord, if you will empower me, I will bless the nations. And there are smart people, after they are done talking with all that intelligence, they will ask you for transport back to their house. Listen, let me teach you something, my dear people. One of the signature traits in this ministry is humility of heart and a recognition that God is the factor, the absolute factor behind anything good that comes from your life. Never be embarrassed to let the nations know that without him you do not amount to much. It is only foolish people who would think that is a disregard of your reputation. Those who know God and those who have lived long enough in life will know you are not lying. Are we together? Let's go to number two. Let me hurry up. Who touched me? What kind of man is able to touch God? A man who perpetually acknowledges and honors God. Trust in the Lord, the Bible says in Proverbs 3 from verse 5 and 6, with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, acknowledge publicly. Acknowledge him. I was speaking not too long with one of the fathers of faith in this nation. And he told me, he said, Apostle, my advice for you is always acknowledge the Lord. Acknowledge him before your people. Acknowledge him in the secret. He kept pounding it and he was telling me. He said, always, don't fall into the trap of trying to receive glory to yourself always and I said yes sir acknowledge him acknowledge him he said it's a very simple but deep secret that you let men see that God is behind everything and God says you did this for me get ready for the next level and mysteriously you may not look like it you will not even add up yet the results never stop God for you are we, are we learning now? Number three, very quickly. What kind of a man can touch God? A man who chooses to walk and live by faith. Who touched me? What kind of a man can touch God? A man who chooses as an act of your will that you will walk and you will live by faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. The Bible says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must come believing that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Genesis 15 and verse 6. I like this. Genesis 15 and verse 6. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it unto him for righteousness. Those who believe God, that, that woman you see, 
she did not just come to a celebrity she did not just come to a jewish messiah she knew that this one had the power to heal me and i believe it and she reached to the helm of his garment and virtue flowed you can be around the things of god and never believe that god is able to lift you you can be around a powerful anointed house like this and not believe in the god of that house that he's able to lift you bless you change your story you can shout amen and still not believe you can even fall down and stand up and still not believe those who touch the heart of god those who touch the hand of god those who can contact the power of god are men and women who choose to walk and live by faith say i choose shout it as loud as you can say i choose to walk by faith say it again i choose to live by faith what does it mean to live by faith to live in obedience to god's word to live in obedience to god's principles whatever he says to do do it don't be too intelligent for god you need to mechanically argue because he has carried the foolish things of this world you see when you walk with god sometimes you will become so childlike in your operation but in that simplicity of heart you will produce extraordinary results a man, a woman, a ministry, a business, a home, a nation that chooses to walk and to live by faith is a nation that can touch God. Number four, the statement who touched me, it means what kind of man is able to touch God? What kind of man is able to create that spiritual impression that compels God to reach down to you for the profiting of your destiny. Are you ready? A man with a heart of genuine gratitude. I tell you the kinds of people who can touch God. A man or a woman with a heart of, or a genuine heart of gratitude. Psalm 69, 30 to 32. Very interesting scripture. I will praise the name of the Lord with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs. The humble shall see this and be glad and your heart shall live that seek God in that manner. You see, to praise him with a song, back to verse 30 and to magnify him with thanksgiving for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise let me give you one minute and i hope i'm not wasting your time mention at least two things that from january till now God has done in your life and I want you to tell him thank you in a very lavish intentional way go ahead two things there are many things but I want you to choose two things Zaria UK Canada Koinonia Global go ahead ah. and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise for provision thank you for wisdom thank you for results for the miracle services for koinonia for safety living in the morning and returning back in the night thank you that someone had a dream that you died by january and this is april you are still alive and the dream was not a lie it was a desire of satan for your life and yet you escaped death someone tell him thank you thank you for finances changing my story changing my levels in the spirit multiplying your hand upon my life In Jesus name we pray live a life of gratitude 
ever grateful you are walking home father i give you praise thank you you tell him thank you in your language thank you in english thank him in every other language you know and while you are telling him thank you the devil will tell you but he has not done this and that and that and you thank him lavishly very quickly number five what kind of man is able to touch god for the profiting of your destiny for the profiting of your life are you ready one who is willing to not just receive but to be a blessing one who is willing to not just receive but to be a blessing one who is willing to not just receive but to be a blessing give us luke chapter 8 go to verse 46 please very quickly jesus said somebody had touched me for i perceive that virtue is gone out of me 47 watch this and when the woman saw that she was not hid the bible says she came trembling and falling down before him the bible would have stopped there but she went further the bible says she declared unto him before all the people she allowed her story to be a testimony to let other people know that god is able to do this in your life because she saw that all those people who were touching jesus they wanted all kinds of solutions but they did not know how to get it now that she had gotten the result she was not selfish she used her life declaring openly this is what he did all of you are trying to look for money but here is the path god led me to i can share with you you are trying to look for healing i suffered stage four cancer and i was about to die god save me i will not be silent this is the path i followed are we together i was about to be thrown out of my house somewhere in abuja here but i prayed a certain kind of prayer and god came through can i share it with you those who touch the heart of god are those who have as a covenant within their heart a desire to be blessings with their lives write this down in genesis chapter 12 and verse 3 it says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so all the families of the earth will be blessed but they will be blessed in thee and through thee second corinthians chapter 1 and 4 a scripture that has blessed me for many years i like us to read it together right and then please read ready one to read who comforted us in all our tribulations uh-huh that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted by god that means when god comforts you when he comes through for you he expects that you must know that someone somewhere around the globe is also suffering what you have suffered you lost a loved one and god granted you grace to come out of it there is a testimony out of your pain out of your victories there is a testimony out of your scars and out of your crown that can be a blessing to someone let me tell you the truth many believers are selfish it is the reason why they are not able to touch god what did you do that brought you the anointing what did you do that brought you genuine kingdom prosperity what did you do that took your ministry to a global scale what did you do that announced your business to the nations how did you maneuver through the limitations around your life you can comfort others with the same comfort the woman who had almost lost her destiny and was at the well she dropped her fetcher and everything there ran to the city and said all of you come the four lepers remember the mistake they were about to make they wanted to eat everything alone and they said no we are not kind enough we are lepers and this abundance is for a nation our entire lifetime will not be able to exhaust this let us send word to samaria that there is good news and that everybody can be a beneficiary of it let me tell you the truth one of the ways i know as far as receiving multiplied grace is concerned is serve the one you have with all your heart if god has given you 10 naira let someone benefit one or two naira from it and that 10 naira will not stop that was the secret that kept the woman the widow of zarephath she had just her jar of water and then the morsel of flour 
and the prophet came to teach her something not just to receive a miracle he said let me tell you how things remain from what you have serve the purposes of God with it and you will never experience complete depletion it's true hallelujah from what you have one day from that your one room you can cook one pot of rice and put it in little packs and give two or three people and tell them this may not be much it may not even be the kind of thing you want to eat but this is with love from me this is Jesus extending his hand and God says you could do this with one pot so I would do something for you and bring you to a point where you can serve the nations this is how we started by the grace of God we didn't wait until we had the power to raise people from wheelchairs if the one you have is headache do it with honor don't go somewhere and say people from wheelchairs stand up you'll be embarrassed except if you just want to struggle your way you can start from where you are you don't have the power to heal but you can speak to someone and bring inner healing go ahead use produces increase use produces increase efficient use produces increase hallelujah use produces increase what kind of man can touch the heart of God the man who is willing to be a blessing using your victories using your testimonies using your scars using your crowns using your victory stories to bless your world and ultimately to help people know Jesus like we say love Jesus and serve him if you have vowed that everything God does in your life will only lead to you being a blessing and will help you to make many know Jesus love Jesus and serve him I tell you you, have, you will touch the hand of God in a way that will surprise you every prayer I pray as touching God giving me anything or bringing any kind of increase to my life God is my witness I always connect my desires to kingdom come this is the reason why I'm asking you to give koinonia this oh God this is the reason why I'm asking you to bring this to my life the honor of receiving this receiving that let it be for your glory let it be for your name let souls be saved because of it if you add 10 naira to my life let it be the reason why somebody will not cry let it be the reason why somebody will be able to pay his rent let it be the reason why someone's daughter will not die in sickness if you add one level of the anointing let it be the reason why oppression will end in the life of someone if you send me to this region and that region you see when your life no longer becomes about you you have found the key to touching him do you know the woman would have kept quiet knowing she was healed she would have slipped herself away there are lessons we never will be able to learn but she came declaring I'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy that's what she did before Jesus that I'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy powerful I'm the one you have shown favor you have shown me favor. You have shown me favor. I'm the one who say. I'm the one. You have shown favor. You have shown me favor. You have shown me favor. You didn't work for the car, but somebody drove that car to your house and gave you the key. Don't brag. Let someone know Jesus because of that car. Are we together? Yes. You see, the reason why we give testimonies here, unfortunately, in church now, testimonies are just beginning to be a show. I'm hoping that God will restore generally testimonies to be a platform that shares the goodness of God. Are we together? Let me encourage you, when you come to share testimony, I know many people give... As you share this testimony, come with a broken and a contrite heart. This is what God has done. He gave me one billion. Don't joke with me. Oh, you have rubbish the testimony. 
we are supposed to see Jesus through the testimony not you if the whole focus is on you you've lost the testimony I was about to die and God came through for me and somebody through your testimony can see the healer stretching his hands to him now that is truly a testimony are we together now maybe a man of God came and is sitting somewhere across the overflow and whilst you are sharing the man is wondering can ministry ever work for me like this and then you just remind him that one time ministry did not work for you too suddenly that becomes his message always hide behind the cross and let men see Jesus this marketing of self is what makes good things to still destroy people when it comes from us there is a way you can talk about money that does not become a blessing again it is clear you are boasting there is a way you talk about anointing there is a way you can talk about prayer about fasting about the word about increase there is a way you can talk about excellence in business people no longer see Jesus it becomes clear you are marketing yourself learn this you alone will not come I surrender oh you alone at God and I surrender you will not go down if you let people see Jesus rather than yourself it is impossible to focus on Jesus and they forget about you I tell you you try this I've seen very wealthy people billionaires you talk with them, they tell you their story, they leave you more spiritual than even a businessman. Because in their story, you can see how selfless they are. You know that they are completely detached to their money. I don't want people to come for Koinonia and see a celebrity man of God. No, that would be an insult to your time, insult to your destiny. That behind the frailty of this man you see, you will see the risen Christ moving through the lips and the hands and the gestures of this man that you look beyond the speakings to the heart you want to touch the hand of God you want to touch God hide behind the cross all this marketing of self I am a this I throw all of that away you alone at God and I surrender when God sees that everything about your life will reflect him, he will give you money beyond what you think you can handle. Believe me, he will give, you will see power, grace, influence. Again, I refer you to something God told me years ago. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That is one of my covenants with God, to let men see him that I may decrease that you will increase and my goodness what a good deal I'm happy I was foolish enough to make that deal and thankfully by his grace that that will continue some of you here who are in ministry let me give you a kind word of advice the temptation to always want to be known to project yourself is a weakness in people but let me give you a kind advice learn to hide behind the cross and let men see you after they see the power the display of wisdom the intelligence the creativity perhaps for a businessman after they see the versatility in knowledge when all is said and done and people are tempted to begin to worship you remind them like the apostles who tore their clothes I'm only human the excellency of power is of God there is nothing a man can receive except that which is given to him from heaven let me give you my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up on this meeting. I've given you five descriptions of the kind of man who can touch God. A man with a broken and a contrite heart. A man who perpetually acknowledges and honors God. A man who chooses to walk and to live by faith. A man with a heart of gratitude, genuine gratitude. And finally, one who is willing to use everything that flows from God to you to be a blessing to the nations. But I want to wrap up by giving you one angle to this. Who touched me can also be that men can touch God 
in a way that leads to their destruction. Hmm. Who touched me can be a statement of empathy and love, but who touched me can be a statement of anger, even from God. There is only one kind of person who can touch God that way. Many tried to touch God that way and they saw a side of him that was not good. Pharaoh tried to touch him that way. Nebuchadnezzar tried to touch him that way. Darius tried to touch him that way. Herod in the New Testament tried to touch him that way. Even Paul as Saul tried to touch him that way. There is a way a man tries to touch God that becomes a downplay of his power, his grace, his wisdom. I wrote something down here. The kind of man who can touch God in a way that leads to his destruction is one who perpetually fights the advancement of God's kingdom. A man who with his life, with his words, with his whatever it is, his resources, any man who tries to perpetually fight the advancement of God's program is touching God in a way that he will receive a response that is not of kindness or empathy but of judgment Exodus chapter 5 1 to 3 I needed to bring this angle so that you will learn afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh thus saith the Lord God of Israel let my people go that they may go and hold a feast unto me in the wilderness verse 2 hear what Pharaoh said who is this Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Verse 3. And they said, The man you are playing with is the God of the Hebrews that met with us. Let us go, is a warning. We pray thee. Three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? men can touch God or attempts to touch God by touching the advancement or the continuity of his program by touching the vessels that enhance his program and the Bible is very clear as to the fact that when men touch God that way he reacts in a way that can be very dangerous let me give you a final scripture Matthew chapter 21 this scripture blessed me profoundly 12 to 15 two kinds of people touch God at once 12 Matthew 21 12 to 15 watch this and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple these people touched him by doing something to his house that brought him anger and pain the Bible says he went there he didn't comfort them and advise them he overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves next verse the Bible says and he said unto them it is written my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves or robbers the next group another group came immediately the blind and the lame came to him in the same temple they touched him and he healed them two expressions of his touch within the same scripture you can touch God to attract his power to attract his empathy to attract his compassion using the principles I have shown you or you can make up your mind that my life will be an interruption to God's program and you can touch God in a way that may make him respond sometimes it will be a destiny altering way to the negative men died because they touched God wrongly kings died because they arrogantly made certain declarations kings were turned to beasts for years and made to sojourn the earth, the bushes of the earth, because they attempted to touch God. Let me tell you the truth. It is a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of the Lord. As much as the Lord is merciful and compassionate, I can tell you that when men rise up to become perpetual interruptions to his program, after he exhausts his mercy on them, he can arise in vengeance and arise in power and arise in anger he says let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered and I've taught you here who God's enemy is that God's enemy is not a man you don't like or a woman you don't like 
God's enemies, anyone, any people, any persons, any institutions that perpetually become an interruption to God's kingdom come program. Everyone who interrupted the flow of the gospel, interrupted the power of God from reaching people, they receive sometimes fierce judgments from God. So we will not end the teaching who touched me just by showing the compassionate, loving and wonderful side of God. There is a way men can touch God. There is a way men can mock those who love God. There is a way men can mock those who serve God. There is a way men can mock those who live for Jesus. There is a way men can mock people who love him and spearhead the gospel across. Missionaries and all kinds of people. You see that? You may not know that you are touching him in a way that will create a response and it will destroy you. My prayer for you is that you will only touch God in a way that leads to your lifting. That you will only touch God in a way that leads to your rising. That you will only touch God in a way that will cause the nations to see him revealed through your life. That you will touch him in and through your worship. You will touch him in and through your preaching. You will touch him in and through your giving. You will touch him in and through your brokenness and contriteness of heart. You will touch him in and through your walking and living by faith. You believe that I want you to rise up on your feet and begin to pray that in the name of Jesus, like the woman with the issue of blood, I make up my mind that from today, my heart is open for destiny altering encounters. Someone pray, go ahead. From the depth of your heart, begin to pray. Someone is praying, who touched me? A revelation of what happens to men when they touch God, when they reach, when they come in contact with, when they connect to, producing feelings of affection and empathy and sympathy, causing him to reach down to their destinies, administering to them his power, administering to them his wisdom. Are you praying? Administering to them his favor, administering to them liberty administering to them peace that surpasses all understanding who touched me may it be that Joshua Selman is the man who has touched him may it be that Koinonia is the ministry that has touched him may it be that your family is the family that would have touched him for I perceive that virtue I perceive that glory I perceive that favor. I perceive that the power to liberate. I perceive that the power to heal. I perceive that the power to raise men. I perceive that the power to change a man's destiny for good has come out from me. Pray one last prayer. Father, may everything you bring to my life be used for your glory. May everything, everything, I will do your will, do your will, do your will, oh God. Are you praying? I will do your will, do your will. One more time. I will do your will. Do your will. Do your will, oh God. No matter whatever may come my way, I'll follow, I'll follow. to me be used for your glory to reveal you to the nations to reveal your power to reveal your wisdom to reveal your grace to reveal your love to reveal your wisdom one more time That's how
how it works in the kingdom when all of you becomes about all of him his glory his life his power then you are willing to see God in another dimension I'm wrapping up and I want you to listen to me I said that last week and let me repeat myself as I wrap up it was not part of Jesus's schedule to heal Darius daughter nor the woman with the issue of blood there was no prophecy that had gone ahead of her that healing was coming she was in every way disadvantaged Jesus was on his way to honor a centurion's request who said his daughter was at the verge of dying and in honor to such a man he was on his way one of the synoptic accounts will tell us and whilst he was going a woman by her hunger by her sincerity frail haven't bled for years lost money lost life lost her health of course you can imagine that beauty and color would have been lost too yet she reached only God knows what all the things she told herself is just one of the things that the Bible lets us know that she said to herself meaning there were many other things she said to herself the Bible just gives us access to one of them if I may but touch the helm of his garment I will be healed maybe she also said and if I'm healed because that statement does not sound complete if I touch the hem of his garment I may be healed perhaps I'm just thinking aloud maybe she said I, if I'm healed I will make sure the nations know that he is the healer I will make sure the nations know that he's the lifter I will make sure the nations know that an outcast an unclean woman culturally so can become one who will spearhead the campaign of raising his name I vowed with my life that in life and in death my singular purpose and assignment will be to reveal Jesus to the nations with everything that I have everything that I am and with all that I can have as resources within me this is how to touch the hand of God translate all that desire and weave it to your prayer your prayer now becomes powerful translate all these thoughts weave it to your fasting your fasting now becomes potent translate all these thoughts weave it to your Bible study your Bible study becomes potent translate all that thoughts weave it to your church attendance your commitment to ministry every other thing suddenly lines up and finds its value because you corrected your understanding I want you to leave service tonight as you go home knowing that men can touch God and that they can touch God in a way that defines their destiny that empowers them with such grace and glory they are transformed and from their transformed selves they can reach out to the nations lift your hands and give God thanks for what you've heard tonight we honor you oh God for bringing us word in season we know that man can touch you the great majestic even mysterious God can be touched by mortal men in the name of Jesus thank you for staying to the end of this video thank you we are very very appreciative of your presence in this community this is a community of believers we are here to enlighten ourselves through the Word of God through practical life applicable teachings so if you have not subscribed to this channel please do subscribe to this channel if you have not liked this video please just take two seconds and just hit that like button and share this video with others to bless someone just as you have been blessed by this video it is only god that can do the impossible and when you are faced with impossibility in your life the only place to run to the only person to run to is god and that is why we encourage ourselves to keep studying the Word of God, to keep praying, fasting, to keep meditating on the Word of God so that God will come through for us. Have a nice time. God bless you. See you in another of our videos. And there are so many videos that we have posted so far. Go through our channels. Go through our channel and check on our videos and see how impactful they are going to be in your life thank you god bless you keep shining for jesus 
keep shining for God. Peace.